I've been wanting to make this course for six years. I got the idea when Grant from 3 blue one brown posted his video on neural networks. The moment he said this. One thought experiment that is at once fun and kind of horrifying is to imagine sitting down and setting all of these weights and biases by hand. So welcome to my fun and horrifying new course where we'll play with neural networks inside this special playground I created. The goal is to teach the car how to drive and we'll do that by manually changing the network parameters using the mouse wheel. <laughs> we'll start with a simple network that just stops the car from going off-road and gradually increases complexity to teach the car different traffic rules as well. Dare I say, you don't need any prerequisites to start this course. I think the playground and the lessons do a good job explaining the math. I use human language and only introduce fancy terms so you know they exist, in case you find them elsewhere. But if I'm wrong and you still get confused, just ask in the comments or on Discord. Now, by changing these parameters manually, we'll understand exactly what the neural network does. This is really different because courses normally teach neural networks in a machine learning context, where they're automatically generated from data. That makes them work really well, but it becomes impossible to tell what they do exactly. It's why we call them black boxes. But I want you to understand what the neural network can do before I teach those complex algorithms for generating them. And the best way to understand, I think, is by playing with them like this. Now, this course is good for those starting with AI, but also those with some experience who want to understand things better. I've been working with machine learning for over 10 years now, and some things still surprise me. I think it's because training complex models is so easy nowadays, just write a few lines of code and you're done, makes us overconfident, thinking we know more than we do. I've seen many solutions that fall short, are overly complex, and use unnecessary resources. If you took my machine learning course, you know what I'm talking about. There we used a huge neural network to get the best results, but one with a fraction of the size could have good accuracy as well, and we could explain what that does. So I think there's real value in revisiting basics from time to time. Throughout the course, I'll give you homework assignments to improve your logic and deepen your understanding. I'll also give you a final challenge to teach the car how to race instead of following the rules nicely. I'll host a live stream event where I race against your AI cars and there will be prizes. I just haven't figured out what those are yet, but stay tuned. And while you're designing your race car, I'll continue to teach how to code some things as well. For that part, you do need to know some math and JavaScript. This playlist can help with that. And we will continue the self-driving car project, so it's good to be somewhat familiar with it, but we'll mostly just add new functionality into it. So if you feel confident in your skills, take the last version from GitHub and try to follow along. What I'll teach then is how to implement Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm, so the car knows how to reach its destination. I'll also teach how to make the game mechanics. We'll control the main car, but the others will be AI. I'll show you how to monitor their progress and make the scoreboard. Now, this top view is not great when racing, I think. I'm really used to seeing things from the car's perspective. So I'll teach you how to code the camera sensor where we render what the car sees. This might be useful someday for object recognition, but for now, I just like it. And what I like even more is this view from behind the car. I'm gonna teach you how to do that as well, and I'm not done. <laughs> Controlling the car with the keyboard is not ideal. I'll teach you how to implement analog steering twice. First, by turning this into a mobile app and using the device orientation sensor to turn. I think it's better than using the keyboard, but I have an even better one. Using the camera, some basic image processing, and these blue wristbands, we're basically gonna become Iron Man. Oh yeah, and the sound, it's procedurally generated from scratch. All of this is just plain JavaScript, no libraries like everything else on the channel. So you can learn all inner workings of a complex system like this. And all of this is AI. The new camera sensor, the pathfinding, the fancy controls using the smartphone, 
or this thing, image processing, augmented reality, they all make the system more intelligent. That's what I want you to get from this course. AI is often a combination of things, not just neural networks. And artificial intelligence is not the same as machine learning. Many people confuse the two. There's no machine learning in this course. Which reminds me, someday I'll teach you how to add machine learning into the system as well. But for that, we need data. So if you want to help, go to this link and race. Try to beat my time from there. If you make an account and do a good job, your name will appear there and others will see you racing next to them. That's actually me racing. I'm recording every move we do, so I can replay it like that. But don't worry about making mistakes. For machine learning, we need to teach the car what not to do as well. So mistakes are more than welcome. Excited? Great. Now get ready to put your neurons into overdrive. Get it? Because our neural networks are gonna... Oh, no, no, no. Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. This is the playground, and look at the car, it's doing something. It's applying the so-called right-hand rule for solving mazes. So if you're inside a maze, put your right hand on the wall, and you'll eventually get out of it. Most of them, anyway. There are some mazes where it doesn't work, but we'll get to that later. Now just look at this. The car is exploring, it's going everywhere, and it's actually great. It's not easy to do this. You can press this manual override button on the right, and now the car is controlled by the keys on the keyboard. And just try to use the arrow keys and make the car do the same things without crashing. It's really difficult, like a very tedious thing that you have to do. And um, if it happens so that you crash, then you can always press this other button here and the simulation will restart. So for me, this is quite challenging to get it to go even half as good as what this neural network can do. So turning off this manual override, you can see it's going much more confidently than me and knows how to turn just right. Now, let me put back on this manual override and teach you about the sensors next. So you can see these two lines coming out of the car. These are what I call sensors. And you can see what happens to this front sensor here when the car gets close to the border. It lights up. It's a proximity sensor. So it knows when something is, is nearby and how close that thing is. Now the sensor also has a range. So this tip here is as far as it's going to read anything. And the values in that case are going to be zero. So now this front sensor doesn't read anything. And you can see these sensors as input values here to the network. And if you hover, the value is written there. So if I'm going to go now up here, you can see how that value is increasing from 0 to 1, essentially, or 100%. But not exactly 100%, because if I'm going to zoom here a little bit, you'll see that the sensor starts in the middle of the car. So it's not going to go all the way to 100% because the car is going to crash before that happens. So let's see where it crashed. It was at 93% or 0 0.93. Let's restart this simulation. And the other sensor is here on the right. And it's the second input to the matrix. And this one might actually go to 
um, percent maybe without crashing because the car is not as wide as it is long <laughs> but I think soon after this 0 0.93 now um, oh 0 0.94 okay so it can go a little bit closer than the other one just because of how the car looks like let's restart this simulation and even without hovering you can see the intensity of these inputs like this one is colored yellow this one is grayed out it indicates that this one is reading a larger value and see how this one is now lighting up as well the last input here is a different kind of sensor it's the speed of the car in phase one of the self-driving car course we only had these kind of sensors implemented via ray casting but there are other things that the car can know like it knows its speed so this value here is going to have negative values when going backwards and positive values when going forward so it's a little bit different than the other two sensors it can also have negative values the other ones couldn't have those and look at the color coding when i'm going backwards that meter there is blue and when i'm going forward it's yellow so this color coding yellow for positive values and blue for negative values is going to appear everywhere so you can see here negative weights that are blue and this is a positive weight and here this spinning bias value here is a positive value this one here you know it's a negative value because it's blue and these up here are the outputs so the car can go forward left right and in reverse and it only goes like that if these neurons light up so these two are lighting up now it means that the car would like to go forward and to the left but because of this manual override is, is on it doesn't do that I don't let it do that but it wants to do that so let's see what happens if I move the car forward and that right sensor here doesn't read anything anymore what happens to the outputs there you can see it changed a little bit it tries to go to the right now because it wants to look for that border for that you know that right hand rule there it looks for the border so it's going to turn right let's see it do that if I turn off this manual override the car continues like that and you can actually play with these values here on the right by using the mouse wheel so for example you could change the value of this weight maybe make it a negative weight instead and you can see that this is a very delicate system here so the car doesn't work now as as before anymore but you could do that the playground lets you play with these values any way you want like maybe let's make this bias also uh, negative it actually did something it started working again but then it crashed so again really sensitive and I'm not going to explain to you what this network is doing right now you will eventually understand what everything here is doing and be able to implement this logic for the right hand rule and even the more complicated logic like with the stop signs and traffic lights and things like that you'll see but we have to take things slow and step by step so go to the top of the url here where it says s is equal to default and type s is equal to fwd and this here is a much simpler scenario from before first the car has only one sensor this time this front facing sensor here but it works like before so if I turn on this manual override and move the car forward you can see that it's lighting up 
And it also shows here as the input to the neural network. So this part is exactly the same as before, but only one input. And the network is really simple. It's just one neuron here making the decisions. And the only decision it can make is to go forward. We can control the car to do more than that. Like we have access to all its capabilities here if I'm going to use the arrow keys, but this neural network can't decide all that. It only has the potential to go forward or not go forward. And at the moment it's doing nothing. Like if I'm going to turn off manual override, the car just stands still. This neuron is not lighting up. And the reason for that is how this thing works. So this input value coming from the sensor here, we can call this x, it's a variable. This value is multiplied by the weight. In this case, it's zero. And then if this value, x times this weight, is greater than the bias here, which is also zero, then this neuron lights up. But it can't be greater than the bias because this is zero here. So any value for x multiplied by zero, it's gonna be zero. And zero is not greater than zero. So with this neural network here, it can never light up, no matter what the input says we could make it light up by lowering the bias here. For example, let's make it minus 0 0.1, 0 point, <laughs> it crashed there. But basically any value here that is negative is going to work and zero or any positive value for the bias is not going to turn this network on ever because the result of x times w here is always zero because w is zero. So let's just leave this bias to something like minus 0 0.2 and restart the simulation and see the car going forward like that. It never stops now, okay? Because again, no matter what the value for x here, it's never going to be anything else than zero when multiplied by zero. So this also needs to be something for it to work. And let's turn on manual override and restart and go somewhere up here with the car. For example, this location. And let's try to modify this weight so that this neuron turns off because we want the car to stop going forward when it sees something so that it doesn't crash. You can try playing with this weight and having large values like this and you'll see that nothing happens. This output neuron still says go forward. But if you go lower values, negative values, minus 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 4, 5, 6, minus 0 0.6 in this case, then this neuron turned off. And if I'm going to move the car a little bit here, you can see that there is this kind of sweet spot there where this neuron turns on and off. Let's restart this simulation and turn off the manual override. And the car still hits that place. So we need a different value for W. Let's put back manual override, restart and Let's try to get maybe somewhere here so that when we are further away, it turns off. So I'm going to modify now this weight and go lower. Looks like minus 0 0.8 is a value, but we can go actually even lower than this. So maybe minus 0 0.9, minus one. And let's see what the result is here. You can see now this sweet spot is much lower here. Let's try to see what happens now. So restart this simulation and turn off the manual override. And it stopped, it didn't crash anymore. It stopped exactly at this dotted line here. Nice. So let's turn back on the manual override, restart and see where is the spot 
where it changes. So here, this is the moment where it changes from on to off. And if you look at the input value, this 0, 19, and play a little bit with the car at that point, you will see that it changes at 20, basically. This 20 is the same value as here, but minus 20 in this case. And it's clear why that is if you look at this weight value, because it's just minus 1. So whatever x is multiplied by minus 1 means minus x has to be greater than minus 0 0.2 or x less than 0 0.2 because the sign switches if you multiply by a negative value. So that's why these values are matching right now because this weight is 1 minus 1 but basically it doesn't have any scaling effect other than flipping the sign. So having weights of 1 or minus 1 are making the math easier in a way. But basically what this means is that if x is going to be less than 20% then this neuron stays on. Otherwise the neuron stays off. Now, there is a way to visualize things so that we don't have to do this kind of mental math all the time. I'll show you. You just go here in the title and say s is equal to fwd underscore d. And it's the same thing as before. If you will turn off the manual override, you will see that the car is going to stop at this dotted line. But now this thing appears here at the bottom. This axis here is the same thing that we are visualizing here and here. So 0 0.79 or the 79%, it means 79% of this arrow. That's where this yellow dot is present. So this arrow is for the input value. Changing back to manual override, you can see that I'm moving this point up and down because that's how the relationship with the sensor is changing. This point will always be in the positive side of this axis because if we go far away like this, the smallest value that the sensor can read is zero, so it aligns like that. And there is also this other line here and this lighter region. This is controlled by the weight and the bias. The bias, if you're going to lower it, make it even smaller, it's going to move that region up. And increasing it is going to move that region down. Now we had it at minus 0 0.2. Let's keep this value. And let's see what happens when we modify the weight. Increasing it does this. And decreasing it does that. It changes the slope of that line. So this describes a line. And the lighter region that I have here, I made it so that when this yellow dot is inside of this lighter region, it means that this neuron turns on. So now if I'm going to move the car up a bit, you can see that that place where the lighter region intersects the axis is the same spot where the neuron turns on and off. So you can tell where that point is just visually. This is 20% of the whole distance here without doing any mental calculations. And this network that we have here that solves our problem is not the only one that solves our problem. Let me show you. You can put here a value of minus 0 0.1 and then this value let's change it to minus 0 0.5 and you can see that this point lines up again. The difference now is that this slope right here decreases at a slower rate, at half the rate that the value on x is. And this network works exactly as before. So if I restart this and 
remove the manual override, you can see that the car is stopping exactly at the same spot. So there are two solutions for the problem. Now, homework task for you. Think about it. How many solutions are there really? Let me know in the comments. Let's do the math as well to confirm that this point here is at 20%. So x times minus 0 0.5 has to be equal to minus 0 0.1. So dividing by minus 0 0.5 means that x is equal to 1 divided by 5, basically, and that is 20%. And you could write this in code. You could make a simple if statement and say, if minus 0.5x, if the variable x is the input, is greater than minus 0.1, then accelerate. Otherwise, do nothing. So that piece of code is the same thing as what this neural network is doing. It's important to understand that the neural networks are capable of doing these kind of if statements. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you here. If you click on this diagram, it's going to show you a simplified view where it only uses one dimension. So these two dimensions here are important if you want to display this slope as well. So the simplified mode loses some information. We don't know what that slope is. But for understanding what happens here and seeing that the neuron is on when the sensor is reading in this section here, this is enough. And reducing from two dimensions to one dimension like this will mean that in the future we'll be able to show higher dimensions easier. So losing some information, but it will let us do some nice visualizations later on. Play around with these values again and see how the visualization changes there. Maybe we use the minus 0.2 value and the minus one weight, the one with the simple math from previously, and you see it still looks the same as before. But the slope now decreases much faster at the same rate as x. And what I mean by that is, if I'm going to go here and put this bias to zero, whatever the value is here, it's going to be the same here. So this is essentially a square. Now, if this weight is going to decrease by 0 0.5, for example, then this rectangle here is not a square anymore. It actually fits two squares because the rate this decreases is half of this x. Now, believe it or not, I'm not done talking about just one output there. Next time, we'll still have only one output there and there's a lot to talk about it. But uh, I want to leave you with something more fun to do. So go here at the top and say s is equal to b, c, k. And now you can practice having two outputs going forward and backward and see what you can do with that. Let me just show you something real quick. So here, this is the same as before. You can control this lighter grayish region, but the other is going to control this green region here. So if I'm going to increase this bias so that it goes like that and decrease this one, now the car is going to go backwards in the beginning. Your homework is going to be to make it go forward and then bounce back like that. People teach neural networks in different ways and that can make things confusing. I'm gonna try to clarify some things now you don't really have to listen to this part, it won't matter in the rest of the lessons, but it might help you someday. Now, some people say that for the neuron to light up, x times the weight must be greater or equal to the bias. Not really a big change, but that neuron would light up now with everything set to zero, and in ours, it doesn't. But you can always make a small change to the bias and it's gonna work pretty much the same. There's no real reason to choose one over the other, so you will find both implementations out there. Just 
don't be confused. Another thing people do is move the bias here on the left. Same thing so far, but they also changed the minus to a plus. This doesn't seem right. I mean, it's not the same thing anymore. But again, it doesn't really matter. Any network you find that works in the first case can be transformed into one that works in the second case. Just flip the value of the bias. The reason you find this implementation is because it looks like the line equation, something people are familiar with. I like to use the neuron fires when stimulated above a threshold idea, so it's just personal preference. Another thing you may find is people removing the bias entirely, but that would break things. We saw earlier that we really need the bias. So for it to still work, they add here an extra weight connected to a fake node that is always on. So this weight here acts exactly like the bias and everything is all right. I think people like this because it groups together all parameters in one thing, so to speak. Now, this here is called an activation function, and this one in particular is a step function. There are others that are more powerful, like a sigmoid here would produce values between zero and one. So the car could be more like in the real world and accelerate more or less depending on the situation. I don't want to teach smooth activation functions because our controls here are binary and it would make things more complicated. Our car will still be able to control the speed by pressing the acceleration at different rates, so we don't really need those. But they are important when doing machine learning. A gradient like that helps optimize the networks. That's why you'll find them everywhere, like in this other playground I found while building mine. It's really great, a bit more abstract, but a really useful learning tool. So check that one out as well. Thanks for watching and see you guys.